In the video today, you're going to learn about seven photography mistakes that if you're a beginner photographer, you just got to avoid. First up on the list today, we have unbalanced photos. This is a really common problem if you're a beginner photographer and sometimes if you're more than a beginner photographer. This is when you get a wonky horizon and it just ruins the photo. How many times have you gone on social media, saw a potentially beautiful photograph and then it's had a wonky horizon? Take a look at some of these examples. Okay, granted, this is quite an extreme example, but you can see this is a full on wonky horizon. This could have been a nice photograph, but whoever's taken it and put it out there, they forgot to sort out the horizon. Now this is more like something that you probably see on social media where your horizon is not a million miles off, but it's off enough for you to actually just see the wonky horizon and not notice the beautiful surroundings that this photograph captures. You see the really great news about this is it's really easy to fix. All you've got to do is fix it in camera. You've got a leveling system in your camera where you've got two lines and when they're green, it means that you're level. Alternatively, you've got grid lines in your camera, which you can switch on. And when they're switched on, you can actually use that and then put it against the horizon so that you know that your photograph is nice and straight. And if all that passes you by, you can always use a tripod, use the level on the tripod, or you can use something like Lightroom or in fact, whatever photo editing software you have and use the straighten tool. Overcomplicating the scene. Ah, nostalgia. You see, this is something I used to do so much in the early days of photography. I'd go out somewhere and I'd see, say, a beautiful waterfall. Then I'd see the leading line, which went up to the waterfall. Then I'd see the rocks, which kind of framed the waterfall. And before you knew it, I was trying to take a picture of everything I could see. Because in my head, I think that everything in that photograph would look great if I captured it in one photo. And pretty much... That's never the case. It's best to pick just a few things in your photograph and focus on them. Take a look at this example. This is a great example of a complicated photograph which you just don't want to do because it's ruined a potential beaut of a photo. This is an example I'm going to share with you of a complicated scene which could have been absolutely incredible. So, Look at the foreground, you can see that you have first these flowers here. There's a lot of flowers here and they have been like chopped off in the middle. So you've got this big, large area which your eyes are drawn to and it does nothing but distract you from the grand scene at the back, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. You've also got these areas here, which are quite distracting. Now, we've all seen reflection photography where you get a beautiful scene in a reflection, but these are not adding any reflections. They're just adding mess. You've also got this bush here, which has been chopped off half in the scene. And I think it's been, think it's been balanced with this rock here, but even then it hasn't been balanced correctly. Just this whole area here, just this whole area can go. And the reason this can go is because it just does nothing for the photograph. You see, the real winning photograph is right here. And that's right in the distance and you can't see what's going on. But you've got this beautiful ice here, this icy sea. You've got these gorgeous mountains with this strong leading line drawing you into this amazing, amazing coloured sky right here. And if only the photographer would have concentrated on two or three elements, this is the foreground, this is the midground, taking you into this beautiful background here at the back of the photo. The main thing to take from this is to keep it simple. A lot of people go out and they want to capture everything because they just get excited when they see it all. I did. But what you want to do is you want to look at two or at very most three elements in the scene. Strong foreground, 
mid-ground sometimes, you don't always need a mid-ground, and a strong background. And focus on balancing your scene up with just them three areas. And I guarantee you that your photos will improve hugely. They really will improve so much. Now, you can also focus on things like a leading line, which is really good, where you usually have two elements or three in your scene. You've got a strong leading line, which directs you through to a brilliant background. But if you really focus on this when you start taking photos from now on, just keep things simple, and I guarantee you that your photography will improve. Now, this is something that actually makes me quite sad. So... If you look at us as a culture these days, we are always comparing ourselves as human beings to other human beings and what they've got. This family over here has more than we have, therefore we want it or we want to strive to get it. Now this is so prevalent in the young these days and that's why we have the highest suicide rate and the highest depression rate pretty much ever since statistics began. Now this is sad because kids these days are always comparing themselves to things which are unachievable, like models and Instagram, which may or may not starve themselves to try and get this perfect body, or at the very least, they're probably having their bodies doctored on photo editing software and they're having their bodies morphed and their skin floors taken care of. And it's just unachievable for the young people and anyone trying to achieve it. Now that doesn't just work in the beauty sector, it works across the board. And it certainly bleeds into things like photography. You can be someone which has started out photography, a beginner, and you start looking at another photographer who's been doing professional photography for 10 or 15 years. And then you get into this dangerous trap of comparing yourself, someone that's just started, to someone that's been doing it for years. Now this is really, really not good. And I highly recommend that if you have got into this habit or this routine to try and stop it straight away. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't get inspiration from other photographers. I actually highly recommend that you do that because it's a great way to push through these kind of ruts that you may have or these plateaus. It's a great way to just drive through, get inspiration and get that passion going again. But just don't compare your photography to another photographer, especially if they've been around the block many more times than you, because it's only going to cause misery. Your camera's histogram is very important when it comes to judging and getting your exposure correct. So it's really important that you use your histogram. And I know that a lot of beginner photographers either don't know what it is or they don't know how to read it. Whatever it is, they don't find that the histogram is important or at least they don't know where it is. And this is something which you have to get right in the beginning because it makes a massive difference. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of photos which are overexposed and underexposed and really what you want to avoid. So here we've got an image which is really overexposed. You've got the background which is really blown out here and you've also got elements of the foreground which is blown out on her top and it's just nowhere near as good as it could be. Now, some photographers like this style where they've got a blown out background right here. Um, and sometimes it can work quite nicely. But when you're just taking an image, especially if it's, if, if it's for a client, sorry, you want to make sure that your exposure is correct. If we take a look at an underexposed example, now I think this could have been great. And you could actually take care of this in your photo editing software if you use Lightroom or whatever it is. But this is really underexposed, it's too dark. And if this was a bit lighter and it was exposed correctly using the histogram, then this could be a potentially lovely photograph. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why can't I just take care of an underexposed or overexposed photograph after, you know, in photo editing software? And the answer is you can, but not all the time. So if you're overexposing your image, chances are you're not going to be able to take care of that after the fact. And that's because if you blow out your highlights, it's very difficult, almost impossible to bring them back. 
Now, underexposing, you can usually do two or three stops and go over into your shadow so it's really dark and then pull back these details, but not always. And you don't always know when you're two or three stops over. So you might go further into your shadows, which means that you can't bring back any of the details. So what you really want to do, what I'm really suggesting is use your histogram and this way you'll be able to read your shadows and your highlights and your midtones. And this means that you can get a great balance of exposure when you're taking photographs with your histogram enabled. We have all been guilty of this one at some time, but it's definitely something that in the early days you experience a lot more frequently. And this is getting out of focus photos, which in other words, is a completely ruined photo because if it's blurred out of focus, you can't really fix it. Here's an example. This is London. You may not be able to recognize it as London because it's so blurred. Here's another nice photograph of a lady in some woods, and this could be a lovely summer photograph, but it's so out of focus that you just really wouldn't pay any attention to it. Now, one of the main reasons that beginner photographers take out of focus photographs is because they get their shutter speed wrong. And this is a big one that you need to fix in the early days. Now, a kind of rule of thumb, which I use to fix this is always to shoot at one over 250. This is your shutter speed. And you want to do this because even if your camera hasn't got stabilization in the lens or it hasn't got stabilization in the body, using this shutter speed is going to guarantee in most cases that you're gonna get nice sharp photographs. Now, if you do have some kind of IBIS in your camera or image stabilization in the lens, then you could probably bring this down to one over 150 or 125 and that probably should suffice in most instances but I always like to kind of err on the higher end and then keep it at 1 over 250 unless I know that my camera can take care of it with its IBIS. Now of course if you're shooting with a tripod scrap everything I've just said you can drop down your shutter speed a lot lower especially if you're shooting long exposure but then it's a different kind of thing which I'm not going to go into right now but you can go a lot lower because you know that your photo or sorry, your camera is going to be stabilized when you take your photo, which means that it's going to be nice and sharp anyway. This is something which is actually not discussed hardly ever. I haven't seen this on any videos on YouTube and it's something which I know that we suffer with. I hope it's we. It's something I used to do anyway a lot in the early days. I used to shoot with auto exposure, especially when I was in manual mode because I wanted to say I was a manual shooter. But actually, I really wasn't because I was using ISO auto a lot of the time. Now, this can play a big part on your photos looking grainy. The real rule of thumb with this one to fix it is if you're shooting outdoors and it's nice and light, then you could probably use ISO auto and you're not going to have any issues because you know you've got the daylight to shoot in and you know that your ISO is going to stay stay nice and low and it's not going to produce grainy images but if you're shooting in low light or the dark this is definitely a setting you don't want on because you want to know how high the ISO is going to be if you don't keep an eye on this and you just put it on auto then this is what's going to happen you're going to end up with grainy baby pictures well, if you're not a baby photographer, you're going to end up with grainy pictures anyway. But what I'm trying to say here is you can avoid this very simply by just ensuring that you only use ISO auto when you're taking pictures in great natural light and don't do this when you're shooting in low light conditions. Finally, this is something which I was most guilty out of anything on the list that I've mentioned so far today, setting up my tripod too early. And the reason this is a biggie is because when you set up your tripod and you haven't surveyed the scene, you haven't made sure that your composition is good, where you're taking the photo is right, 
then you can end up with an average photo instead of a good photo. And this is something which you really must nip in the bud early on. I used to go to destinations, something that I'd planned like an outing or, you know, some kind of vacation where I was going to take photos for two or three days and I'd get to the place and I'd end up being so excited that I'd set up my tripod, I'd start taking photos and I hadn't looked for my composition to start with. The first thing, the very first thing you want to do is you want to get your scene you want to kind of suss it out enjoy it if you get excitable just take it in for five or ten minutes get them excitable feelings out of you and then you can just start looking for a composition with your camera get your camera angle right get your camera in the right position and then only then set up your tripod and this will make a big difference you'll stop going to places coming away with average photos and you'll start coming away with some absolute bangers I hope that you've enjoyed the video today and I hope that if you're a beginner or someone that's relatively new to the world of photography that you walk away with some nuggets of value and you can apply this to your photography to avoid making these mistakes in future. I'd love to hear which one of these was kind of most useful or helpful for you so if you happen to want to chat after the video just leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you and we'll talk about it after the video is finished. Now guys if you haven't yet I'd love to have you subscribe here at Ben's Guide and have you join this growing community of photographers and videographers and whatever you do for the rest of the day guys just make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.